Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, pause it and try the problem on your own. So in this problem, they tell us that f of x, right, that's function notation, f of x means an output called f based on an input x, and the input-output relationship follows this rule right here, a third of x plus 9. And they're asking us which of the following statements is always true. Is the output f of x always less than 0 for any input? Um, is the output f of x always greater than 0 for any input x? Um, and then there are other scenarios. If x is less than 0, so if the numbers are plugging into x right here are less than 0, then f of x, the output, is less than 0. Is that always true? Right? They're asking always true. And then if, f, if x is greater than 0, so if the numbers are plugging here into x are greater than 0, then f of x is also greater than 0. So which of these are always true? Um, I think it's important to actually sketch this thing out as a graph and look at it that way, but maybe there are several, of course, there are several ways to solve it, and uh, we'll look at a few, maybe. Um, so here, right, if we think of our graph, our xy graph, x and y, what would this function look like, f of x equals a third of x plus 9? Well, here, um, we can think of uh, a third of x, sorry, plus 9 equaling f of x, uh, or we could write y equals a third of x plus 9. These are equivalent statements. It's just that in this, you might have a preference. The second one, y is your output based on a third of x plus 9. And the first one, we're using the symbols f of x is, is your output, as your output. And f of x could be thought of as y, right? They're interchangeable. Um, so these are basically lines. And we have 9 as the y-intercept. So let's say it's up here, 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's a y-intercept right there. And the slope is 1 third. So you can go up a third and over 1. Or for me, it would be easier to go up 1 and over 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we go up 1 and then over 3 about here. Up 1 and over 3 about here. And of course, if you were doing this, you might, you might want to be more precise. But I like sketching this out. Um, you take your ruler and then connect your dots, of course and you've got a representation of this line. So it gives you some senses of when the output is um, greater than zero or less than zero. So the y-axis can be thought of as your output. In other words, up and down is the output. And that can be thought of as f of x, right? So basically, then the question becomes, when is the line greater than um, zero? And when is it less than zero? And that point right, of distinction is right here. So this is called the x-intercept, and that separates the graph into two regions, really. The x-intercept is the point when this line is going to cross the x-axis, and the height is going to become negative. Anything above this point, the height of the line is positive. Anything below this point, um, the height of the line is negative. And what do we know about that point? Well, we know that that point has some number in it, some negative number. Let's just call it A. And the height is 0 at that point. So we can quickly solve for that point using algebra. Now this is just one strategy. I'll show some others. Um, so the height of this point, the x-intercept, is 0. So we plug that into our equation. Here, that's the output. right? This could be thought of as y or the output f of x. So we can plug into either equation. Either way, it goes in this position right here. So 0 equals 1 third of x plus 9. And I, I encourage you to think about this. Don't get overwhelmed by the algebra here because this gives you a really powerful approach to the problem. Because when we solve for x here, taking 9 from both sides, we have a third of x equals 0 minus 9. It's negative 9. To solve for x here, I'd multiply both sides by 3 because 3 one thirds is 1 or 1x. And 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. What this tells us is that, that this point right, is negative 27 comma 0, and that tells us that when, when x is greater than negative 27, so if x is greater, oops, sorry, if x is greater than negative 27, then f of x is also greater than 0, and if f of x, if, excuse me, if x is less than negative 27, then the height, f of x, at the output, is less than 0. And of course, what this point is saying is if x equals 0, then f of x also equals 0. 
So it's like a it's like a border point right there. Now that would that would really enable you to, to define what's happening here. And some of these definitions are like smaller versions of our answer right here. So here, we can cross out choices one and two right away. And we could have done it in the beginning because we know the line, or in other words, the height of the line, because the line continues both up and down, of course, depending on your perspective there. Uh, the height of the line is always uh, is not always positive or negative. It's both positive and negative. It goes on forever. The only um, the only way around that, of course, would be if the slope was zero. For example, if we had a graph, and this is x, and this is y, if our line has a slope of zero, that means it's a flat line. It could be down here, right? Not going up or down at all, and that would mean the output is less than zero. And that would that would match choice two. And then, uh, let's use a different color here. If the slope of zero is for a line is up here, that would mean, of course, it's always a, a positive height, always greater than zero. Um, but that's not our case here. Our slope is not zero. It's, if it's anything but zero, it's going to cross both regions eventually. In choice three, it says if x is less than zero, then f of x is less than zero. That's not true because we can see, we can see that in the region here. It's called this. That's not, not a good color to use. Use a different color. Um, so in this region right here, right, this uh, all these x values are less than zero. All these little x values in here, but the height is always above zero in this region. So this is not true. If x is less than zero, then the height f of x is less than zero. We can cross that out. And the only remaining choice is the correct one. And you can see it. If x is greater than zero, that's all these x values basically in this region and dot, 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 beyond x is greater than zero. You can see that the height is always greater than zero. So that's true. Um, another way of solving this problem, if this was not working for you, is to simply test what they're asking you. So, for example, um, choices one and two, you, you can eliminate them quickly. If you plug in zero for x, oops, f of zero would equal a third of x, or zero, plus nine. So just by plugging in zero, you get nine. Zero plus nine is nine. So it can't be true that f of x is always less than zero. Likewise, here we plug in a different value. Let's say you plug in, um, I don't know, negative um, 300. <laughs> so here, if you plug in negative 300, f of negative 300, or even just an extreme negative. Um, I'm chuckling because I chose a really extreme number. Uh, when you're testing something out, you can choose extremes, or numbers like zero and one. Numbers like two might not be so great to test, but choosing more extreme examples will quickly test how something quote unquote behaves. So if you plug in negative 300, you get a third of negative 300 plus 9. I chose also chose 300 because it's a, a negative 300 because I know that it would be divisible by 3. So a third of negative 300 is negative 100 plus 9 gives you what? Well, that gives you negative 91, right? And that's a negative result. So it can't be true, of course, that f of x is always greater than 0. And then here, if you want to test this one out, plug in numbers for x is less than 1 like negative 1. If you plugged in x is negative 1, you would get f of negative 1 equals 1 third times negative 1 plus 9, and that's a positive result, right? That's negative 1 third plus 9 is 8 and 2 thirds. So that's not true. And then if you tried x values larger than 0, you would realize that the outputs f of x are always larger than 0. So there's lots of ways to solve this problem. Um, I prefer the algebra, of course, it's because I'm more comfortable with it. Um, and it's also good to know the algebraic approach because you might not have choices to choose from. It also leads to a deeper understanding of the problem. Uh, but of course, you can use the choices they give you. All right, thanks.